I'm Robert Harley, editor of the Absolute Sound magazine, and we're here in my listening room where we're going to shoot a video, and I'm going to give you a tour of all the equipment uh, in my reference system. And this is a companion video to uh, another video that we shot about the design and construction of my listening room. So be sure and check that out as well. We'll start the equipment tour with the analog front end. This is the Basis AJ Conti Transcendence Turntable. Uh, I've been a Basis fan for a long time, and this is AJ Conti's ultimate expression of uh, turntable design. He'd been designing turntables f uh, since the, I think, the, the early 1980s. And I've known a lot of high end designers over the years and seen how they work. And they're perfectionists and detail-oriented and passionate, but AJ was really in a class by himself. He was so passionate about turntables and analog playback. So he called me to tell me about this turntable that he'd been working on for years, and he had, had the fundamental question, why do records sound different from analog master tape? So to answer that question, he bought two Ampex ATR-102 two-track mastering machines, and had them modified identically to the modifications done by Bernie Grundman Mastering. He then got analog master tapes that had been cut at uh, Bernie Grundman Mastering. So he had the LP cut on Bernie Grundman's uh, mastering chain, and he had an original master tape that was used to cut that record. So now he had these two references and he would play the t the, his design prototype turntable and listen to the two and say, how is the turntable different and why is it different? And he had this ultimate reference of the master tape to hear what effect the turntable was having. So he continually refined the design over several years and he came up with this, which is really a masterpiece of, uh, of engineering. And he was really excited to tell me about this because he said he got closer to the sound of master tape than he ever thought would be possible at any time in his career. He was, he was generally um, um, thrilled by what he had achieved. And then um, I wasn't able to hear the turntable because I didn't have a reference system at the time. I was living in the, the rental house while this house was being built. So then when I got this turntable in and listened to it, I was absolutely floored by how it sounded. And manufacturers who have been here uh, setting up amplifiers or speakers or whatever else, uh, when they hear this analog front end, they can't believe how good it sounds. It sounds, it's so low in coloration, it's dead quiet. And one thing that I really admire about basis turntables, and this in particular, is it's zero bling. It's 100% engineering and no bling, no surface cosmetics is pure function and it does its job. So there's a vacuum hold down system with a rubber lip around the outside and the vacuum is drawn from the center hole and it comes through these ribs. And when you put the clamp on the record, it makes an airtight seal and it holds the record down against the platter and stops it from vibrating. And you can compare the sound with and without the vacuum hold down. You can just turn the vacuum off and you can instantly hear how much better it is with the vacuum. So this turntable is fitted with an airtight uh, Opus cartridge, which I really like the sound of. It has a certain sweetness and fluidity that are missing from a lot of moving coil cartridges. It, it doesn't have the etch that a lot of moving coils have. Um, it may be a little softer in dynamics than some cartridges, but it's well worth that trade-off to me uh, to have that smoothness and warmth and musicality. This turntable is equipped with a uh, Basis SuperArm uh, 9. They also make a SuperArm 12, and it's a phenomenal tone arm. So the complete package um, really elevated the LP experience for me. I haven't heard some of the like quarter million dollar turntables or $400,000 turntables. Seems the sky's the limit these days. 
But for me, this is the ultimate LP playback system. The uh, digital front end is a WADAX reference server and reference DAC. And these two products are made in Spain. And uh, in my experience, they are the absolute state of the art in digital playback. And I've heard quite a few of the, the best digital products. Uh, unlike turntables, uh, some of my colleagues at the magazine specialize in analog playback. Uh, I've tended to specialize in digital uh, since I started reviewing in 1989, actually. I've really followed the evolution of digital audio. So the, the, the WADAC server uh, connects to the internet and is a Rune core. So uh, you just have to have the R Rune remote app on your tablet or phone, and it controls the system. And it outputs its signal to the DAC, not on USB or AES EBU or one of the standard digital interfaces, but it has a completely custom interface that converts the signal to optical for transmission. And unlike most server and DAC combinations, where the um, server is the timing reference and the DAC has to lock its timing reference to the server, there's two-way communication through that custom interface. And that greatly improves performance. And I first had these two before that interface was available. So I was able to hear the difference that the interface makes. And it really elevated the performance to another level. This is a very, very sophisticated product. And it has an unusual uh, feature set that you can control the amplitude and shape of the digital signal that's going out and the clock coming back. So you can control those. And it changes the sound in a subtle way but it doesn't change the ones and zeros being transmitted. The ones and zeros are identical, yet you hear a difference in the sound, an analog-like variability by adjusting these controls. And you can store different settings. So you can fine tune it for your system. It gives you that last little measure of adjustment to open up the top end or make it a little sweeter sounding, um, depending on your system and your tastes and, and your room. So that's really an interesting feature not just practically for its ability to fine tune to your uh, system, but the idea that changing the wave shape and amplitude induces an analog-like variability. So that's very interesting. The DAC is also very sophisticated. What you don't see here in this shot is that there are two power supplies uh, that are behind the rack. I didn't have room in the rack for them, but there are two massive power supplies with incredible isolation between all the subsections um, of the, the digital circuitry. And inside is this uh, cast aluminum piece with different modules inside. It's updatable, so you can take a, a module out and add a new module. And um, it has the uh, special input for the WADAX link. And it also has a unique feature. WADAX developed their own integrated circuit um, to correct errors in the digital domain. So what they did was they looked at uh, the errors that are introduced in the digital to analog conversion process, and then they created a chip that added the inverse of those errors in the digital domain before the conversion. So after the conversion, the errors were corrected. It's a very, very sophisticated system, and I don't know how much of that contributes to the sound, but the, uh, the performance of this DAC is, um, is by far the best I've ever heard, particularly when used with the server. So th this pair together um, really is, in my experience, the state of the art in digital. And it does something that digital doesn't usually do. It has depth, dimensionality, the sense of bloom around images. Um, it's a cliche to, to call digital analog-like, but it is very analog-like. So um, I, I'm thrilled to have these two products in my reference system. The uh, line stage in the system is a CH Precision L10. 
and it's the four chassis version. So it's got a left channel, a right channel, and then left channel power supply, right channel power supply. And CH took their already fabulous uh, preamplifier and said, what if we did the ultimate implementation of it? How can we improve it? So they came up with the 10 series. So this is the L10 and it's available um, in a two chassis version or a four chassis version. So this is the four chassis version where you get absolute isolation between the left and right channels and you get the um, really heroic power supply design. And power supplies are really an important part of audio electronics. There's a tendency to think that the power supply is outside the signal path. Because when you look at a schematic, you see the power supply as, as distinct from the audio signal path. When really, the, the electrons that this is um, uh, putting out come through the power supply. So the power supply is actually in the signal path. So that's why um, the, the outboard power supplies are so important to the performance. And this is as transparent a preamplifier uh, as I've heard. It's, um, uh, if a preamplifier has colorations in it, you can't really hear what the rest of the system it does. It, it, um, uh, it overlays the music with either um, hard timbres or reduction in sound stage size. This does very little imposition to the signal. So it really allows the rest of the source components to realize their full potential. And CH Precision, um, made in Switzerland, the build quality is absolutely spectacular. Uh, it's beautifully built. And you can control the whole thing with a tablet and a special app that, um, that CH provides. You have complete system control over the preamplifiers, the gain, um, the phase of each channel, the amplitude of each channel, extreme versatility uh, in these products. And I also use the uh, matching CH Precision uh, M10 power amplifiers. So uh, we'll take a look at those in a moment. So all this equipment sits on the Olympus uh, stands from Critical Mass Systems. And th these racks uh, provide fabulous uh, sonic performance and they're beautifully made and beautifully finished. And I, in my experience, they're the state of the art in equipment racks. I was kind of late coming to the equipment rack, recognizing the importance of equipment racks. Uh, I used a kind of a generic stand for many years. And then I got a high-end rack and I did an experiment where I had to take all my equipment off the um, generic rack. I put it on a, a critical mass rack and heard it, I was shocked by how much difference there was. And there, once I heard that, there was no going back. So a rack is really the foundation of a system. It provides a stable platform for the equipment and reduces vibration. Um, vibration is a pretty significant source of distortion in components, uh, capacitors, uh, crystals in uh, crystal clocks in digital products change their frequency slightly when they're vibrated. So keeping vibration to a minimum is of paramount importance. And these racks have been a mainstay in my system uh, for many years. The, the other foundational product in, or system in a first rate hi-fi system is the AC power. So for this custom listening room, I have a separate sub panel that feeds dedicated circuits, five different dedicated circuits to the listening room. And they're all wired with the same length of 10 gauge wire. So there are places where the wire is um, stretched out and coiled up, where it's longer than it needs to be, so that the ground path is identical for every uh, AC outlet in the room. And there are five, of, five different dedicated circuits. And I have uh, Shunyata AC outlets, uh, which are also uh, make a, a, an important contribution to the room's overall performance. And all the power conditioning is from Shunyata. I have an Everest 8000, and I use all um, Shunyata AC power cords. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack. 
First of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. The power amplifiers in the reference system are CH Precision M10 uh, operated as monoblocks in this system. So this is the left channel amplifier, and that's the right channel amplifier. This is the power supply, and this is the audio circuitry on top. And these are um, unique amplifiers in that you can change their configuration very easily. So this can be operated as a 300 watt per channel stereo amplifier. It can be operated as a 300 watt monoblock. It can be operated in bridge mode for 1100 watts. And so you can change the configuration depending on what loudspeakers you have. So for example, I've used these as monoblocks to drive a loudspeaker that has a single input, single wire input. And I've also used it to uh, bi-amplify speakers. So where one amplifier channel drives the woofer portion of a speaker and one channel of the amplifier drives the mid-range and treble portion. You can also use one channel of the amplifier to drive a separate subwoofer, which I do with my usual reference speakers, the Wilson Chronosonic XVX with the Wilson Subsonic subwoofers. So in my regular configuration, one half of this amplifier drives the Wilson subs and the other half drives the Wilson XVX, the Chronosonic XVX. It's also very um, adaptable in that you can change the amount of feedback in the amplifier and fine tune the sound to a particular loudspeaker. And every loudspeaker seems to be different. So you can adjust the feedback in 1% increments and you can do that from the listening chair through the CH Precision app. So you just sit in the listening chair, call up the app, dial in 1% feedback, listen, 2% listen, and you can very precisely dial in a particular sound and get that last little measure of fine tuning. And that's a feature that's unique to CH Precision in my experience, and especially in 1% increments. Previous CH amps have had 10% increments but this is 1%, so that's a, a huge advantage. It has enormous power reserves. So in the power supply, you think of uh, big capacitors in the power amplifier as being soda can size. That's kind of the cliche. It's got soda can capacitors. This has capacitors in the power supply that are like this and this big around and rows of them. So it has tremendous energy storage so when the output stage has this sudden demand for current to reproduce a transient, it can effortlessly pull that power from the supply, from the storage in the supply. And that confers a big advantage in dynamics. But this amplifier is extremely transparent, very resolving, very musical and involving. Uh, oftentimes there's a conflict between resolution and ease where if an amplifier has ease, it lacks resolution and vice versa. But uh, this amplifier has um, a lot of detail and resolution, yet it's still smooth and relaxed sounding. And that's one of the things that, uh, that I really like about it. And these amplifiers are sitting on a pair of critical mass systems amplifier stands, which provide a vibration-free platform for the amplifier, which I found is important. I've been very happy with these amplifiers and they're really a critical part of the entire system. You may be wondering what these two little boxes are on top of the amplifiers. And this is the Shunyata Altera grounding system, which is a fairly new product for them and not really a very common product category. It's kind of a, new, a newer concept, even though a few products have been around for a while. And what it does is it connects to the uh, ground of the equipment and funnels that noise to ground through filters. 
So the output of this goes to a ground jack on an AC outlet. So it provides a low pass, a low resistance path to ground, and it drains noise out of the equipment and shunts it to ground. And CH, um, in their wisdom, provided banana jacks on the back of their equipment just for this purpose, even though there weren't really products available at the time they designed the amplifier. So this worked out perfectly. There are separate uh, grounds for the signal ground and the uh, chassis ground. And I was, I was a little hesitant when I reviewed this, like, well, how much of a difference can it make? I didn't really hear noise in my system. You know, is, is it a solution in search of a problem? But after I listened to its effect, I was really surprised by how much of a difference it made. Lowering that noise floor, you don't really hear it as lower noise, but you hear it as greater resolution and smoother timbre. And there's a um, mistaken perception if you think about noise in an audio signal and music. You know, you have a thing called signal to noise ratio. And it's easy to think of the noise as this low level um, signal way down here, and then you've got the music above it. And that difference in the, the amplitude is the signal to noise ratio. So it's easy to think of the noise as being separate from the music signal, but that's not the case. The, the noise signal is embedded in the music signal. And the higher the noise level, the greater that um, noise uh, component is of the music signal. So by removing that noise and lowering that noise, the music signal's uh, purer. And it really made a difference. So I've got two of these up here for the amplifiers. And then I have three more of these Altera boxes uh, behind the racks that we just looked at. And it's become an essential component of the reference system. And it's caught on like wildfire. Everyone who hears the Altera system is really shocked by how much of a difference it makes and surprised that the audio community has ignored this problem for so long. So th this is, a, um, a, I think, a really important new product category. So I mentioned that all the AC power cables are from Shunyata, and all the signal cables are AudioQuest Dragon. It's their new Dragon. And so I've got a long pair of interconnects that go from the CH Precision L10 down to the M10 power amplifiers, and from the phono stage to the preamp, and from the DAC to the preamp is also Dragon. And I have Dragon speaker cable as well. So I reviewed the Dragon a few months ago, and I think it really is a breakthrough product, not just for AudioQuest, but cables in general. So the speaker in the system right now is the new Wilson Audio Alexia V loudspeaker. It's midway in Wilson's line. They're 67.5 a pair in standard colors. And these are under review at the moment. I did a separate video on the Alexia V with Wilson Audio's Peter McGrath that you can uh, link to in this video. And uh, this is for an upcoming review. But my long-term reference speaker is the Wilson Audio Chronosonic XVX with the Wilson Audio subsonic subwoofers. So usually there's a pair of XVXs here. They're taller than I am. And in the corners is a pair of the um, subsonic subwoofers. So the Wilson is my long-term reference. And I'd have to say that the XVX um, is the best loudspeaker I've heard in my listening room. And it's my long-term reference. But I have a parade of loudspeakers through here. I've got uh, a couple more coming up before I can return to the XVX. Uh, so I've got a couple of very interesting designs coming up, so watch for videos on those with the designers as well as my full reviews in the magazine. So uh, I hope you'll subscribe to our channel where we'll have more videos like this, and uh, thanks for watching.